Hello friends, this is Supriya. Welcome back to my channel Biology Reader. Today in this session, we will discuss the parts of flower. So friends, let's get started. Let us start this video by discussing what is flower. A flower is also called bloom or blossom and considered the reproductive organ of the flowering plants or angiosperms. Flowers come in many different shapes, sizes, colors and scents. The majority of flowers have vivid colored petals and scents and their job is to attract pollinators like bees, butterflies, etc. to induce pollination. However, the wind pollinated flowers like dandelion flowers usually appear dull in color. Then it is important to know the sole purpose of flowers. We know that flowers are the reproductive structures carrying both male and female organs. So they play a major role in plant reproduction by forming fruits and seeds. Further, the seed dispersal ensures the growth and distribution of plants. Now we will discuss the types of flowers. We know that the basic structure of a flower comprises sepals, petals, stamens and carpels. So based on all the four components of a flower, flowers can be classified into two types, complete flowers and incomplete flowers. A complete flower contains all the four components of a flower and its examples include hibiscus flowers and roses. Then an incomplete flower does not contain all the floral components or we can say it lacks one of the floral parts. Its examples include pumpkin flowers and corn poppy flowers. Then a flower contains two reproductive structures in which stamens constitute the male reproductive part and carpels make up the female reproductive part and based on the presence of stamens and carpels, flowers can be classified into two types, perfect flowers and imperfect flowers. A perfect flower has both male and female parts of a flower. Cherry blossoms and orchid flowers are the perfect flowers and an imperfect flower has either a stamen or carpel and begonia and squash flowers are the examples. Now friends have a close look into the structure of a flower so that we can study the distinct parts of a flower. Here this stalk like structure is the pedicel or peduncle. It functions as a stem that holds individual flowers in place. Then over the pedicel you can see the small bulb like structure where the floral parts of a flower are arranged. It is also known as thalamus. After that these green leaf like structures are the sepals that form the outer part of a flower. These are the modified leaves which generally appear green but sometimes they can be colorful or resemble petals. Then this violet colored portion indicates petals that form the second outer part of a flower. Petals are usually bright in color, but sometimes they appear dull too. Now remember one thing, sepals and petals together constitute the perianth or outer layer of a flower and these two structures are non-reproductive in nature. Then stamen is the male reproductive part of a flower which comprises knob-like anther and a slender filament. Anther is the structure carrying male gametes or pollens. You can refer our previous video to study anther in detail. Then carpel is the female reproductive part of a flower which comprises sticky stigma, stalk like style, enlarged sac like ovary and ovules containing the female reproductive egg cells. Therefore stamen and carpel form the reproductive portion of a flower. Now it's time to know the function of each floral part. Starting with sepals, sepals are defensive in function that protects the flower during the budding stage. In these pictures, you can clearly see how the sepals enclose and protect the inner components of a flower from harsh conditions during the developing stage. Sepals support the flower bud, they prevent the flower from drying out, they also protect the delicate internal structures of a flower. Then petals play a key role in pollination by attracting pollinators to the flower. Like sepals, petals also protect the reproductive parts of a flower. In a flower, petals are the center of attraction because they have unusual shapes, different colors and scents. This property of petals attracts pollinators like bees, butterflies, etc. that transfer pollens from one flower to the another. The main function of stamens is to hold the male gametes. Anther is the region where pollen grains develop and when these pollen grains are transferred onto the stigma of same or another flower, they germinate and fertilize the egg cells. Filament is a thin stalk like segment of stamens which nourishes the anther by providing water and nutrients and it also positions the anther to aid pollen dispersal. Carpel's main function is to carry the female gametes. The stigma of a flower is the site of pollen reception or it functions like a sticky platform where the pollen gets attached. 
Then Stihl provides a passage for the pollen tube germination in which the sperm cells travel towards the ovary. Ovary is the sac like structure that holds the ovule carrying female gametes. The pollen tube penetrates the ovule and the sperm cells fuse with the egg cell to undergo fertilization. So friends, we have discussed about the function of all the floral components. But there are certain terms which are used to indicate the floral layers. Calyx indicates the layer of sepals. Corolla represents the layer of petals. Andrisium indicates the male reproductive layer or stamen of a flower. And gynesium indicates the female reproductive layer of a flower. Therefore, we should not confuse with these terms. So friends, this is all for today. If you find this lesson useful, do like, comment, share and subscribe my channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon for more videos.